Welcome or welcome back to Monroe Live, as the case may be. I'm Mike Lane. Today we're going to take a look at the Chevy Bolt 2LT EV. Uh, we're going to take a look at the ADAS systems. So starting on the outside of the vehicle, styling aside, we've got a singular camera up in the windshield. That's the main camera. It's the only ADAS camera, if you will, if, aside from the parking cameras that are on all four sides of the vehicle. Somewhere up front in the fascia is a radar unit that you can't see because it's behind the plastic. There's a parking camera here on the front. As we walk around the side of the vehicle, typical, we have parking camera underneath the outside rear view mirror, ORVM. And a center camera under the tailgate, the reverse reverse camera. In addition, in the rear, there's a radar unit right about in the corner that's going to be the uh, cross-traffic alert device. It has the typical ultrasonics, in this case four, as a lower cost vehicle. Four in the rear, there's one evenly spaced around the, the rear, or symmetrical rather, and four in the front. And that does it for sensors. So let's get inside and see what we can do. So what I find interesting is uh, a majority of Chevys for 2022 have what they call Chevy Safety Assist. That ADAS package includes forward collision alert, automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking, which I hope we don't test today, following distance indicator, and lane keep assist with lane departure warning. Interestingly, adaptive cruise control is a $375 option. I would call that part of the ADAS package. And, um, we're going to take a look at these. The adaptive cruise is handled by the left-hand steering wheel buttons. Um, we can turn on the toggle the gap adjust, far, medium, and near. I'm going to set it to far because, <laughs> because. Um, and then we've got, you can toggle between actual cruise control and adaptive cruise control. We'll have to show you that on the road. I do like the cameras associated with backing up, parking, uh, let's take a look at it. I'll even put it in drive. So that was the reverse camera. Put it in, in drive. I've got the forward camera activated, and we tried this earlier up until about seven or eight miles an hour, which is kind of nice. Um, I don't want to run over uh, my bicycle that I accidentally left in front of my car or what have you. And the graphics, I think, are well done here. This is an overhead view, obviously, stitched together, so basically computer generated. But I can put this car right square in the parking spot. Did we just hear a beep? That would be a park assist alert. There we go. I'm gonna put it in park. That goes away. Put, put it back to reverse. Let's take a look at these, these different views here. So I can turn the ladder on and off. Switch views side cameras only. <laughs> yeah, pretty simple. All right, what I don't find intuitive is the lane keep button is on the console on the right side here. Um, that just doesn't seem like a normal place to put a button. I looked all over the steering wheel. I looked all over the center stack, and it's kind of, once I know where it's at, it's no problem. All right. I'm actually fairly impressed with the interior roominess and the pickup and the handling of this vehicle. Um, I have to admit I didn't drive the previous uh, generation Chevy Bolt, but this is an attractive vehicle and the package I just went through as far as uh, safety features is simple as it was implemented in this vehicle, but it's impressive nonetheless. I think Chevy did a nice job here. All right, so we're going to get on the freeway and I'm going to show you a complaint I had that I feel wouldn't pass the rental car test was the switch back and forth between adaptive cruise and regular cruise control was difficult. Um, it took me probably 15 or 20 minutes of driving, poking buttons, looking in the manual, and it's once you know, of course, the once you have the keys to the kingdom, you can figure it out readily. But it's uh, roughly a two to three second hold of the buttons to toggle between the two. And to me, that's not exactly intuitive. So. Um, Pay attention to driving here, and then we'll let activate the cruise control. I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
So click on set. It says cruise braking on adaptive cruise set to 61 miles per hour. All right. Adaptive cruise is set at 80 miles an hour and we're approaching traffic. The distance was set to far, so I don't expect to get on top of anybody, but the vehicle now backed off to 75 and we've got plenty of room in front of us. accelerator input and override the speed control so we get another vehicle slower vehicle and boy this car just slows right down you can feel that regen kick in slowed down to 60 59 and still kept a very respectable distance works for me this would be a very nice aid in both highway driving and say stop and go rush hour traffic especially with the regen um, it slows and slows aggressively which sometimes is necessary in traffic I had to press this left button for at least two three seconds it says regular cruise is available and it, I just don't see how it's friendly to go back and forth between the two I'm back to adaptive cruise because I'm lazy so it's available and now I'll set it And in Chevy's defense, if you're going to have a preference driving mode, you're not going to switch back and forth too much between them. It just took a while to find that uh, control and command. Let's see what happens when I don't have anything exactly engaged and I get too close to this vehicle. I do get an orange icon on the dash that indicates I'm too close to the vehicle in front of me as far as the setting I had placed. If I adjust that gap down, it turns green and it allows me to get way too close. Let's go with at least medium. Yeah, here we go. So that's, again, better than nothing, but I'd like to hear an audio chime or some haptic feedback or something, which is expensive, more expensive. But, you know, if you're not paying attention and you're boneheaded enough to get that close, I don't think a little icon in the dash is going to get your attention when it changes from green to amber. But it, it is part of the system, so we got that. Kudos to them for at least having that. All right, so what we've got is uh, our lane centering, our lane keep assist uh, activated, and I'm not really trustful of all this high-tech stuff, but let's let it drift towards one of the lane markings, left or right. Let's try right. I can do feel a little feedback torque in the steering wheel. This is controlled by the power steering control module. All the modules in this car are CAN connected. So as we drift a little bit close here, I get a the icon in the dash, the green car that looks like it's in the lanes. It will turn orange, but it's hard to see if i am got my eyes on the road. I'm certainly near the left edge of the lane on the, on the highway. So there we go, it turned yellow. feel a little torque feedback on the steering wheel that's nothing I'd rely on it's helpful it's better than nothing but it's nothing I'd rely on as far as a, um, a driving aid exactly I guess another way to put it is I could actually cross the line hear the beep and be close enough to impact the vehicle next to me so I'd, I'd like to see it a little tighter, a little more refined. But in no way, shape, or form is this self-driving or pretend to be. So as a driver aid, it's adequate. I like the dash layout. It's simple. Um, like with anything, you take a minute to, you know, look around and figure out what's going on. They've got a little... Uh, energy bubble when I'm accelerating it's yellow and when I back off to a steady state or uh, it turns green and I assume that means that I'm in an optimal uh, energy usage mode. All right let's make no mistake about Chevy's uh, driver assist systems. This is not Super Cruise. GM's rolled out Super Cruise which is arguably one of the better um, self-driving or driving assist systems in the industry. Uh, it has a 
inter internal camera watches the driver. It is geofenced on LiDAR mapped roads. GM says they're mapping 200,000 or some massive number of miles of roads per year. And actually GM's moving on uh, from their Cadillacs. It's spread out to the Hummer. And I'm not sure which other vehicles. Uh, the Chevy's got one of them, I think the Silverado. But next year, they're going to improve that, rename it Ultra Cruise. So this is more rudimentary. I like how the vehicle handles. It's got nice, light, responsive steering. Uh, <laughs> earlier, before anybody else was in the car with me, I was able to take uh, an on-ramp uh, to our local freeway here. And a uh, little bit of tire noise, <laughs> probably because the G-forces were getting up. And it was a little aggressive, but the, the vehicle held solid through that on-ramp cloverleaf. It was, it was pretty impressive. All right, in a sort of summary, uh, lane keep assist is that. It is an assistant. It doesn't lane keep by itself. And lane departure warning does alert a warning, but generally I found it to be after I'd pretty well departed the lane. So it's a good system to have. It's a simple system, but I wouldn't rely on it. Uh, better than not. And and to you know Chevy's credit, as I in indicated, it's uh, standard with the vehicle. So I would definitely recommend the 375 for the adaptive cruise control. That makes driving more pleasurable and certainly easier. Uh, what we didn't show you so far is we have a sport mode on the dash here and that seemed to just change the accelerator pedal input profile. So maybe kind of gimmicky but again this isn't a $150,000 sports car. I like it. Good job Chevy.